This is the first time in my life that I've been able to video an Australasian grab with their young. So happy. This has made my day and I've only been here five minutes. Thanks for joining me today. There is so much advice that you can find on social media that relates to photography, especially wildlife and bird photography. And you'll always get two versions of the same subject that you're looking for. For me, that is a teleconverter for wildlife photography, especially bird photography. And for more than a year now, I've been looking at wanting to buy a Nikon 1.4 teleconverter. And I'd given up because I'd look on forums, I'd watch videos, and the majority of these videos, and on the forums they were stating, oh, you know, like your eyes are will double. For example, you're going to go from f5.6 on this lens, which I shoot, the f8, you're going to get more depth at field because the ISO will be doubled, the images will be grainier. Bird in flight photography is just about useless. Most people say it's not good. I'm just not going to go that road. But there was something bugging me, thinking like, have I made the right decision? Should I have looked at getting a 1.4 teleconverter? Well, I've changed my mind. I want to see if they are right or if they are wrong because some people have their own agenda you don't know that person they might have an agenda that says they don't like teleconverters so i went out and bought the nikon 1.4 version 2 teleconverter last week i tested it out for bird photography and the images i got surprised me you just saw this of taking photos of this australasian grebe with chicks on its back and it just made my day I'd only been there a few minutes, but it just made my day. Then I went on to take some photos of other birds. Before I show you those photos, I feel that the best way to show somebody whether something is good or bad is just showing photos straight off the camera. All the photos you see here are just JPEGs straight off the camera. They're not edited photos. Because if you're thinking about buying a teleconverter, this is the best way to make up your mind. Seeing just the files straight off the camera. Let's take a look at some of these samples to show you the difference between not using the teleconverter and using the teleconverter. And you can make up your mind. So here is Trevor the Heron. If you're new to my channel, I've had Trevor here the Heron for a long time. He was willing to help me to take these test photos. So give it a thumbs up to Trevor because he was very patient while I took all these photos. So you can see this image here without the teleconverter at 200 mils, f5.6, ISO 720. And my focus point is the eye in all of these images. Here is the same frame but using the teleconverter, so I've gone from 200 to 280 mil, and it's f8 now. Because it's a 1.4, we've lost one stop of light, so we've gone from f5.6 to f8. The ISO you can see here also is 1250, so you're nearly doubling the ISO. Here it is at 500 mil, f5.6, ISO 500. Now the same frame, 700 mil, f8, ISO 100. We've just doubled the ISO because we've lost one stop of light. But look at the background. There is very little noise, even at ISO 100. Now here is a comparison that I've got two images side by side. One on the left, 500 f5.6. The one on the right, 500 f8. This is without the teleconverter. This lens is wide open at f5.6. So if you've got an f4 lens, then using a teleconverter, it'll go from f4 to f5.6. If I've zoomed out and I'm at f8, it will go from f8 to f11. You just lose one stop of light. So you can see the ISO has doubled. The aperture has gone up one stop. And this is what a lot of people say. Well, you want your background blurred. So if you're going from f5.6 to f8, you're going to get less blurred in the background. Look at it carefully here. Look at the little fairy lights in the background. There's very little difference here. So I'm not having too much more depth at field. Now I've gone to 
f8. Both these images are at f8. The one on the left is without the teleconverter. The one on the right is with the teleconverter. The ISO is very similar. One is 1100. That's just because the light was just changing slightly. So we could just say that both of them were ISO 1000. The last one here, this is fully zoomed in at 500 without the teleconverter and then at 700 mil with the teleconverter at F8. Can you see how much I've gained? Look at the amount of distance that I've been able to gain. The only way I was able to do this in the past was by using in-camera cropping. I was getting tired of this. So instead of my images being 24 megapixel, they were at a maximum of around 12 megapixel. So I had less room to crop. Here are the first set of sample images. This is an Australasian grip, continuous high, just five and a half frames per second. And there was eight photos taken and all eight were in focus. And you'll see on the video that I kept moving between one grab and the other because this is something else that people are saying this lens is already a slow lens so it takes time to refocus so you're going to miss a lot of shots. I didn't find any difference at all. Now let's watch the video because I had my Samsung S10 on the camera recording everything that I was doing through the viewfinder. Look at it. I come on one grab then I come down here, look how quickly it focused. I go back, take some shots. I'm on the back one. Then I come to the front one. Then I go back to the back one. Can you see that it focused fairly quickly, even at F8? And this is why I had waited so long. This is why I hadn't bought it because I had read and I had watched so many people saying, well, at F8, it's flowing in focus. You're going to miss so many shots. Now this next set is a Royal Spoonbill that I took just as it took flight because people are saying birding flight photography is just about impossible. And here you will see that my success rate was just as good as without the teleconverter. 27 photos were taken at 370 mils. The ISO range from 800 to 2200, 14 in focus, 13 out of focus, which is average for me. I'm not the best for photographing bird in flight. Look how quick the action happens. And it was just climbing into a tree where you see the green tick mark. The photo is in focus. If it's a red cross, it is out of focus. Focus, focus, out of focus, focused, and so on. You can see. and it was just climbing up to go into a tree. Now this photo of Mars Lapwing is to show you the reach that I got. But this one here was just having a drink of water. This is at 700 mils and this is at 500 mils. Look at the extra reach that I've got at 700 mils. This next set of photos is a black Kumra. There were seven photos it was just leaning at 700 mils, two and a half thousandths of a second, F8, ISO range from 800 to 2200. This black Kuma was at least 60 meters away from me. There is no way that I would have taken this shot if I didn't have the teleconverter because at 500 mils, the bird would have been so small. So you can see here, look, you can see the distance it's at. Yes, it's crossed. This one's ticked. This one's crossed. And then all the rest of them has it's just putting its feet on the ground are in focus. The image is nice and clear at seven mils around 60 meters away from me. Now I've moved on to a, an area a little bit further into a marsh. These little red cap, cap plovers, very small bird. 22 photos were taken at 700 mils, two and a half thousandths of a second, F8. The ISO range from 1600 to 1800 and they were all in focus. And I'm using dynamic area AF. You can see even at 700 mils, this is a very small bird, but the photos are nice and sharp and my focus didn't let me down. Now this is where I had a bit of a problem. I was using a monopod that day with a fluid head and all of a sudden all these pied stilts that were in front of me took off. I was in dynamic area AF. So I had to quickly swap from dynamic area AF to wide area AF small and try to take them. But being on a monopod with the fluid head, trying to move around because these birds were just going everywhere, I'm trying to focus. And I, I'm getting some, you know, you can see like it, it's just everywhere. I'm trying to see where they're going through the viewfinder. My success rate 
was less than half. So I was still happy with the amount of photos that I got, which was 39 photos in focus, but 66 of them were out of focus. And here are a couple of the ones that I, I really liked. Now here's a, a collection of the photos that I did take that day in RAW, edited in Adobe Lightroom. These are some royal spoonbills you can see. Look how clean the image is. And if I zoom in, look, still very nice and sharp. These are the small australasian grebs. Look how sharp the image is, even though it is heavily cropped. This is the full-size RAW file I have cropped in at 700 mils f8. Look how clean the image still is. You've got to admit, I am very impressed that I could get photos like this. This is the mask lapwing at 700 mils. Look how sharp it is. This is another photo of a raw spoonbill with a black cormorant. This is one of the spoonbill photos in flight at 360 mils. Look how sharp it is. Beautiful. This is an Australian white ibis coming into land at 700 mils. I've cropped this image quite a lot by at least two thirds and I've still got a sharp image. Why? Because with the teleconverter, I didn't have to go into DX mode. So I've still got a 24 megapixel image and I can crop it quite heavily without degrading my photo. Remember the black cormorant that was landing? This is the original file. Take a look at the raw file edited. Look at the black cormorant, nice and sharp, 60 meters away. That's a long way away to be taking photos of bird in flight. This is the little red cap plover, heavily cropped because you saw in the photo, it was only taking maybe a quarter of the frame, heavily cropped and it's still nice and sharp. Hope you can see that sometimes you've just got to say well i'm going to give it a go people on social media are saying it's bad some are saying it's good well try you won't know if you don't try this is why i'm very happy to have bought the 1.4 teleconverter and i wish that i hadn't listened to the negative feedback that people were talking about this because i could have gotten so many more photos quite a long time ago if you enjoyed the video give it a big thumbs up if you've got any comments, feedback, you want to ask a question, leave it in the comments box below. I'll answer your question. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.